All right, uh, let's do the chain rules tables. So, but first let's understand what is a chain rule. So a chain rule, basically we have function of functions. So, so in this case, h of x is made of two functions. One is go here. So if you look at, if you want to draw that in this kind of box model. So h of x is made of two. One is when x comes in, we got h of x. And on here is g of x. So now here, um, th this x and that x are different x's. They are not the same thing. The x here just means input. Okay, so the input for this function is x, but the input for this function actually is h of x. So the output then will be g of h of x. Okay, so that's that basically where we got started. And then the chain rule says this, uh, dh dx, first we take a derivative on this function, but we do it with respect to h, so dh, and then multiply the derivative of this function, so it's dh over dx. So therefore, the h prime one is actually g prime of h at one, Remember the one is this one, this number got in. So once it got here, it's become h of one. So that's the input for, the, for this, our function g, gx, then times h prime of one, okay? So I want to write maybe down here, uh, it become more clear. This will be g prime h of one times h prime and one. So knowing that, then we can go looking at the table and see what we got. Now, if you look at the table, we know our H1 is what? The H prime one, this is a prime here. H prime one, when X is E1, so this H prime one is three. So we know H prime one is three. And we'll also know what H1 is because, which is here. If X is one, H1 is two. Now then H prime one now becomes G prime of H of one, we know is two, just like that, times H prime of one. So therefore what we got here is G prime of two, which is three, then H prime one is three. So that three times three give us nine. So that would be the answer for this problem. So once you get the hang of it, actually it become pretty uh, straightforward. Okay, let's look at the next one. And uh, same thing here, remember what, what we do here is uh, this d of dx of that, this is function of functions, function of function. So that first of all is df over dh times dh over dx. So at x equal to negative one, Of x, so this means now at x equal to negative one. Sometimes we write like this, x to negative one. So what we got here is basically f prime because that's a derivative of h 
at negative one, then times h prime, then uh, let's use a red minus one. Okay, so now let's look at uh, what we have. What is our h negative one? h negative one, this is a negative one, h of negative one is negative one. And we all know what's if the h prime negative one is this one, so this is negative four. So therefore, uh, what we have from here is f prime of negative one, because h of negative one is still negative one then times h prime negative one. Now, f prime negative one, f prime negative one is negative three. And h prime negative one is negative four. So negative three times negative four is 12. So that will be our answer. Mm -hmm. That would be 12. Now we're looking at the next. So same thing. Um, and the DF, capital F, DX, it will be the DF first that we are doing to the this function, then times DF, DG, then DG over DX. So therefore, F prime of four, is basically is that prime of g of four, okay? And times g prime of four. So if you're not quite sure, you can always grab, draw this box model, x comes in, the first function we get into is g of x, then next one is f of x. So that's the whole thing is our, capital f of x. So you can see that if x is four, then the output here is g of four. So g of four uh, get into as an input, the output then is f g of four. Okay, so that's why we have something like this. Okay, so now we have Let's looking at what is G prime of four. G prime of four is eight. So X equal to four, that G prime is eight. Now if you're not, sometimes you can just put the line across that and you'll see. This is what, if X is four, then G prime of four is eight. So that is eight. And what's G of four then? G of four is this line. G of four is negative two. So therefore what we got here, uh, the capital F prime of four is equal to F prime of negative two times G prime of four. Now, F prime negative two uh, is actually this, oh no, sorry, F prime is this one, so be one. Then G prime of four, we know uh, it's eight. So the answer will be the eight. So that we we'll put an eight here. And you see that actually it, we are doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, now last one, let me clean this up. Okay. Now, same thing we're doing. Uh, the d of dx, we say this function, function of functions, now is df of dg, sorry, dh, then times dh of dx. So that's our chain rule. And so at x equal to zero, that means uh, 
d of dx, f h of x, we actually write like this, x equal to zero. Different way of writing at x equal to zero. So that will equal to f prime h of zero, then h prime of zero. So h prime of zero, which is that one. And if you want to do that, so that equal negative three. And h of zero is here, so that's two. So therefore, what we got here is f prime of two and h prime of zero. f prime of two, which is that, three, then times h prime of zero. Uh, we already do know how is that, is this one, negative three. So therefore, the negative nine. So that's what we have. All right, so that's all we have here. And I hope uh, this is uh, uh, helpful for you.